Ms. Ramos is a clinical nutritionist and she has her own business working with children. She'll tell us more about that as an introduction. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Andrea Ramos, and I am a clinical nutritionist and a personal chef. So I just wanted to introduce myself because this is the first time I am working this series. I have 12 years experience in various nutritionist set settings, including uh, working in the hospital settings, community settings. I've worked in Harlem with HIV, in food service, and in community nutrition. I'm an active member of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, and along with that, I have, I'm a part of various groups, dietetic, pediatrics, um, sports medicine, cardiovascular, so, so. and I am registered dietitian candidate. So having an, a weak immune system, pretty much all the communicable diseases, Ebola, TB, HIV, AIDS, and measles uh, lowers your body's defense system um, against germs, leaving you in a weak, with a weak immune system. Even in a mild case of food poisoning, this is very detrimental to those with a uh, compromised immune system. So there are some symptoms like nausea, vomiting, headaches, weakness, dehydration, anemia, loss of bone density, and appetite are some of the symptoms that those with um, compromised immune system may experience. And many of these may also come from the side effects of the medicine that they're taking for their actual um, situation, that, um, health concerns. So building a strong immune system, I guess many of you may know the pyramid, which is so old, but I still see it around. Um, and that was a little complicated as far as um, reading it. So then thanks to Michelle Obama, we have a simple process, which is the MyPlate method. Um, very visual, um, I think uh, elementary students can, was able to follow that. So it shows that half the plate are your fruits and vegetables, a quarter is grains and protein, and a quarter is your protein. Um, and then the dairy to the side. So in, with a compromised immune system, food safety is optimal, is, is priority. So um, it's clean, separate, cook, and chill. Uh, cleaning indicates that you're always washing your hands, you're always keeping um, your surface area clean. Um, scrub your fruits, scrub your vegetables, uh, as far as clean. Separating means pretty much when you're cooking or preparing your meals, you don't mix your meats with your vegetables, you have a separate cutting board, you're always washing and rinsing away because um, you can um, with you can cross contaminate, and that's when there's a lots of bacteria is harboring in the juices of like raw chicken, raw meats, etc. Um, heat for cooking is um, needs to be monitored because the degree range anywhere from 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit is the um, the range of where lots of bacteria that harbors. So um, that's optimal. And in refrigeration, pretty much once you're finished cooking, you need to store your leftovers within two hours. If you have a barbecue or you have your food outside, it needs to be within an hour because within those time frames, once again, that's when bacteria, viruses, etc., harbor within your foods. So um, high protein foods are, um, well, everyone has to have their protein, their carbs, their fats in their diet. So high protein food is a part of the body's defense system. Um, it aids in building muscles and maintaining them, in wound healing, and um, it gives the feeling of satiety. Um, eating a variety of proteins like meats, 
fish, eggs, beans, etc. Um, that's and quinoa are examples of protein foods that um, are, uh, are easy for you to access and help you within uh, having a, a, um, a low immune system. Uh, so the proteins needs to be cooked well done because in a compromised immune system, anything that's raw um, or partially or medium rare or rare is not good for that person um, with the complications because of, once again, foodborne illnesses. So no raw seafood or eggs, anything less than well done is subject to foodborne illnesses and diseases and bacteria. So uh, vitamin-rich foods, I always try to um, tell everyone to eat the colors of the rainbows because actually every color that you eat indicates a different vitamin. So um, vitamin A is, is huge um, and that's your, pretty much your reds and your oranges. It regulates the immune system and protects from infections. It keeps the skin, the tissues uh, healthy and the stomach, intestines, and respiratory system as well. Food uh, with rich in vitamin A are, once again, the oranges, sweet potatoes, carrots, we have kale, spinach, red uh, bell peppers, and foods that's fortified, milk and cereal um, with vitamin A as well. Vitamin C are uh, citrus foods, and they stimulate the formation of antibodies therefore protecting you from the infection and boosting the immune system. So we have citrus fruits, the strawberries, once again, the bright colors. Uh, so the colors of the rainbows, more colors, more variety of vitamins. Um, so we have vitamin E, which is an antioxidant, and the antioxidant protects the cells from damage, therefore protecting the immune system. So that we have plant sources, which we, is where we get those from mostly, is the nuts, seeds, the cocoa, and herbs and spices. And zinc um, is used for wound healing as well as protein foods. And uh, that's found in the meats and the poultries now. Um, and grains, beans, and seeds. Iron is a <coughs> mineral that carries oxygen in the hemoglobin of the red blood cells throughout the body to the cells so that they can come alive. When there isn't enough iron, then we go into a state of anemia. Um, and some of the symptoms of that is lethargic, dizzy, pale, uh, headaches. The best sources of iron are meat and seafood. And if the source of, of iron is coming from a plant, then it needs to be combined with vitamin C in order for it to be absorbed in the body. And so the next is fats. So fat is, fats are needed as much as people try to refrain from fat. It's just a matter of which fat. So we have saturated fat, unsaturated, monosaturated, trans fats. And fats, are needed for your body to protect your organs, to keep your body's temperature um, stable, and it helps in the absorption of the vitamins and the minerals in your body and aids in the production of hormones. However, you must keep in mind, keep um, be mindful of the types of fats. So we should try to, as much as possible, stay clear of saturated fats and trans fats. Um, now, stay clear doesn't mean, z well, for trans fat, hopefully we can find, we can, now can find things with zero. Saturated fat uh, is pretty much a lot of the cheeses, the creamy sauces, and cheese, um, even if you get a low fat cheese, it still may have three grams of, um, of saturated <laughs> fat. So, I try to suggest, try to get down to like around two grams if you can find things with that, um, if that's what you, um, as far as looking at the saturated fats. So, let's see. 
than the healthy fats. So healthy fats would be the unsaturated fats, and that's you find in avocados, salmon, olive oil, the nuts, and the nuts butter. So now, even though these are healthy fats, you have to be mindful that they still are high in calorie, and that doesn't mean that you just can pour it on, which I've had clients say, oh my gosh, olive oil, you know, can you pour it on? No, you still need to use the one teaspoon because it still has the same amount of calories as if it was not a good fat. So, so I didn't really mention carbs, even though that's huge. Carbs is what gives you your energy. And um, Everyone thinks of bread and potatoes and rice as carbs, which they are. Um, however, fruits and vegetables are carbs. So if you are eating uh, your, if you choose to have meat, your protein, I should say, and you're eating vegetables and fruit, that is a complete meal without having the rice or potato or whatever the case may be. However, earlier in the slides, it indicated the colors uh, whereas a sweet potato is orange, so that's a potato. We can have quinoa, which is high in protein, high in fiber, and that is a grain. So there are alternatives to what everyone always indicates that we can't eat rice, we can't eat potatoes, or it's bad for you, etc. Um, moderation, of course, is key. We just all need to be educated on what's a serving size for each of the foods. Uh, when we go to restaurants and they have a 10 or 20 ounce steak and people are just buying, I mean, your serving size is three to four ounces. So that 20 ounce steak should be lasting you for a couple of meals. Yeah. So, uh, so when you have a compromised immune system, actually not only a compromised immune system, but everyone should cut back on salt and um, the recommended daily allowance is 2,300 milligrams a day or less, and that's only equal to a teaspoon. So addition, adding on salt should probably not even occur because you're gonna get that probably naturally in the foods that you eat already. Refrain from added sugar, and I have added this highlighted because the natural sweetness of a fruit or the natural sweetness of um, items that is, is even though they are sugar, they're, they're good compared to adding on. And now they have the food labels that are supposed to be highlighted. I don't see all of them yet. Highlighted and enlarged that says added sugar. So you know to, you'll find that a lot in juices for sure. Um, so a way to um, limit the, the symptoms when you have a compromised immune system is if you eat small frequent meals. You know, so that limits on the, the nausea, uh, the bloating, drinking lots of water is helpful. So this way the patient or the person is, can actually tolerate foods in little bits at a time. So like five to six small meals or small snacks a day is what's recommended. Uh, introduce healthy eating habits and activities to maintain or build up healthy body weight one pound at a time or one meal at a time. So pretty much it's baby steps that gets you to where you want to be. And promote, educate, and encourage families to do this together so that it's more friendly. It's, it's easier to get through that process uh, when you're doing it with someone. So uh, winding down self-care. So drinking water is, is huge. Our uh, body is 75% water. So drinking sufficient amount of water and sufficient is an individual, um, you know, everyone's not the same. So six to 10 is like a range. Obviously people on dialysis, people with kidney disease, they have to listen to their physicians as far as, um, in most cases, they have to limit their water. Uh, but water in your body, it breaks down the minerals and nutrients so that your body can use those nutrients. Uh, it helps remove waste in the body and it's necessary for kidney function. It also helps you from getting dehydrated, which is another um, 
health concern and that occurs with a lot of these diseases. Uh, sleep is definitely mandatory, it's not a choice, and it should be a minimum of seven hours a day um, in order to keep your body healthy and it, because at that time when you're sleeping is when you're rebuilding your muscles, you're rebuilding energy, your cells, everything. So that is imperative. Uh, exercise, so self-care, so you have to take care of yourself. Exercise, whatever your choice is, uh, yoga, meditation, praying, massages, going to the steam room, uh, reading a book, dancing, just relaxing. I mean, that's a part of taking care of yourself, not only food, not only exercise. And many, much of my um, information came from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics um, site and obviously information. And this is how you can contact me, um, my information. So thank you so much.